Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Subscribe, share if you like the content. Um, yes, today I was, um, I wanted to talk about the president tweeting and why he tweets. And it's pretty simple, really, because as we all know, President Trump is a businessman. He's got, he's in the office as prime minister, as president, but he's actually a businessman. He's also got a background as an economist. So he quite, he knows what he's doing, even though he goes on like he doesn't know what he's doing and he shares these flippant comments, he knows what he's doing. What he's doing is drawing attention to himself. He's a 24-7 campaigner. What campaigners do is that they try to get people in. He's actually using himself as the campaign. Um, the one he did that he's going to be um, in the office, they're never going to kick him out of office. That was another way of drawing attention to himself. When he makes negative comments, he knows the media is going to jump on it. So that brings attention back to him. I don't think a day goes by when not someone in the world mentions Trump's name. He's becoming a household name. And it's deliberate. It's a bit like McDonald's. It, you know, it's absolutely deliberate. And, you know, the media is falling into it. They're actually giving him, they're feeding him. They're feeding his ego. They're feeding his narcissism. And they're feeding who he is. Now, when we think about the things he's tweeted about, I mean, more recently, we've got this big thing about him telling people to go back where they come from. I remember when he said, hey, Haiti was a shithole. You know, and things like that a president wouldn't normally say. So you have to ask yourself, why is he doing it? Why is he tweeting? Why is he creating controversy? like I said, to draw attention to himself so that people will always know he's around, always know he exists, and people feed on what he says. If they left him, you know with narcissism, with narcissists, if you leave them alone, if you ignore them, they can't exist. What happens is the people are feeding him they're feeding his narcissism. So, you know, he will continue. He thrives on it. He loves it. You're not hurting him when you're telling him about racism and he's this and he's that. He doesn't care. What he cares about is that the attention must be on him 24-7. He goes around and creates all kinds of mischief because he wants the attention on him. Now, I wrote about a few little things. Um, yeah, it's, well, first of all, I said it's a marketing strategy. He's actually marketing himself, which is quite ingenious. You know, nobody would think that somebody could market himself. Normally, when people campaign, they campaign around the time that they are going to go up for election. But he hasn't. He has been doing it consistently. I don't think a day goes by when Trump isn't in the headlines or Trump isn't doing something. I mean, Trump, Trump, Trump. You know what I mean? So he's doing something right. And you know what? He's going to get in. He's going to win that second term. You know that. So um, let me see what else I wrote. I said Trump, Donald Trump raises eyebrows on Twitter when he shared his video that he will never leave office. That, that created some kind of excitement. Um, Trump has inferred that if he doesn't, if he loses, it's going to be a fix. It's, it's not, the results aren't real and he's not going anywhere. So he's decided he's going to sit in the, in the White House on election day in November 2020 and inauguration day in 2021. The odds are strong that Trump will declare that the election was fake news and refuse to leave the White House if he doesn't win. He probably will win. 
but if he doesn't win. And that will be to create sensationalism. It will be to draw attention back on himself. Um, he warned of events that are best kept secret, i.e. the raids, the ice raids. I mean, those kind of operations are supposed to be secret. Oh, no. He blurts it out, tells them when it is. It's going to be Sunday, which was yesterday. I don't know if it happened because I haven't looked at the newspapers, but I don't, you know, I know in the UK um, it's been happening. I was going to do a separate video on that, though, because they're going actually into pubs um, and they're taking people up already. And they have something called collateral deportation, which is if they're going in, they're going to a particular place looking for one person or two persons or whoever they've got on their books. But if you happen to be in that vicinity or you happen to be around, they can actually take you in and check you out. And if you are not legal, they can deport you as well, even though you weren't on that list. They call it collateral deportation. So they're not just going for Pacific people. It's anyone who happens to be around, who they happen to get their hands on, or are not in the country illegally. Anyway, I'm straying from the point. Um... What else was I going to say? The comment about Meghan Markle, that was that was not a, an appropriate comment to make. The comment he made about um, the Prime Minister being foolish, that's not an appropriate comment to make. The comment about the ambassador, that's not an appropriate comment to make. But it's deliberate. It causes people to talk. It puts him in the limelight. And that's what he likes. That's what he craves. He craves it from the moment he wakes up till the moment he goes to bed. It wouldn't surprise me if he goes to bed thinking, what can I do to create a sensation tomorrow morning? What can I say to stir the pot? It wouldn't surprise me because he's not fazed by it. You know, most people, if they were... Um, if they said something and it was taken wrong, or if it was deliberately said, they'd be apologising, wouldn't they? So he does have narcissistic qualities, definitely, because otherwise he wouldn't thrive on this. And he has this little smile, and he does it in such a smooth way. And he's so flippant with his comments. So he's extremely clever in his choice of words, sufficiently democratic, but provocative enough to leave it open for the, media to, for the media to do the rest of the work. The media, they can't help it. They jump on, oh, you know, he's a racist. Oh, he's this, he's that. They love it. Well, no, Trump loves it. The media thinks they, they're doing a job. The media thinks, oh, yeah, we're going to get everybody to not like Trump because... He said this or he said that. But they are falling right into the net. They're falling into his trap by publicising every single word he says that's out of tune or out of taste. They are, they are falling. He's setting them up. He's actually setting up the media. And he provokes them if they tell the truth. And he provokes them if it's not quite right. You can't win with him. Um, what else was I going to say? He does not allow us to forget him through his provocative tweets. Every single day, he tweets. Every single day. And not only one tweet. hundred, well, I don't know how many, but it's a few tweets. And that is to remind everyone in the world, he is, he exists, he's around, he's present, and he's active. Um, subtle attacks. He says just enough so that the name Trump is on everybody's lips at least once a day. His campaign experience through business is, is, very, is invaluable. We know that through marketing, through his business acumen, he knows about marketing. He knows the importance of marketing and campaigning. So that is what he's doing. He is the campaign. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, oh, I heard that he's trying to overturn Roe versus Wade. This is another um, controversial um, situation. Um, the woman's right to choose whether or not to have an abortion. He's, oh, try, he's trying to overturn that, working on a policy now 
to overturn that. Now, why would he get involved in females' personal business? It's to create controversy once again, drawing attention to him. You know, people have said, oh, he's like a baby throwing to um, toys out the pram. And they make all these comments about him. But if you think how, well, he is quite clever in the sense that what he's doing is deliberate. And the people who matter, well, not even so much matter, but the people who he's targeting, which is not really the individuals, but it's the media who do the job for him, are falling right into the trap. And they don't even know they're falling into the trap. All Trump wants is that we know that he's there, we know that he's busy, and we know that he's up to something, and he wants us to know what he's up to. And another thing that it was controversial was challenging birthright citizenship. You know, people born in the US. I mean, that's another that's another thing he created a forum about. People started jumping up and down. He can't do this. He can't do that. Falling right into his hands. Um, the border wall. That created a lot of stir. That created a lot of sensationalism. Still not built yet, but it didn't matter. It, it did its job. It caused him to have a lot of attention. It caused the world to write about him. It caused people to react. Whatever he does, he wants a reaction. It's deliberate. Um, and I think he's the first person who's ever come out of that, of that high level and called the media fake news. The first. I mean, who else would say that and get away with it? Um, so let me see what else I was going to say about his tweets. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, I was writing about Boris because Boris is quite similar, not to the same extent, but, um, we know he's siding with Trump, you know, he's not supporting the prime minister. He's not, well, the leaving prime minister. He's not supporting the ambassador. Um, he made that comment about, you know, the veiled Muslims looking like letterboxes. Trump will love that kind of statement. Um, and we had the controversy about that shouting in his girlfriend's flat. And then she's um, like half his age. We're just, just uh, you know, just a little bit under or over, whatever it is. I think she's 31. Yeah, so we had that. So he's got that kind of control. He's got that kind of thing behind him as well. So the two of them will walk hand in hand, no doubt. Um, so Trump will get a second term because he campaigns and draws attention to himself 24-7. He doesn't, he does not allow anyone all over the world to forget him. And we have to remember that he's an economist by background, so he's not silly. Um, while we worry, can I pay my rent? Do I feel financially well off? What is the salary like? That is our feel about the economy. He is an economist. And so what he's doing is combining his academia um, with wealth, all the money he has with business acumen and marketing expertise. He's got the money. He can create any campaign he wants. As an, econo as an economist, he has, studied his, he has studied historical trends and used them to make forecasts, hence his constant references to the Obama administration and the failures of the Democrats. As a federal government economist, he has oversight of data collection and analysis relating to the U.S. economy, including employment, prices, productivity and wages among the types of data. And that's probably why he shut down the federal um, government over Christmas period last year. Yeah. And... As an economist, Trump would have projected spending needs and informed policymakers on the economic impact of laws and regulations, analysed issues such as consumer demand and sales to help the country maximise its profits, and hence the reason he keeps referring to tariffs. So, a combination of wit, political correctness, business acumen, balls and USP, he's set for a second term. And the purpose of his tweets, like I said, 
is to let us know he's around, he's active, and that's about it. He doesn't want us to forget him at all. So, that's all for now. Bye-bye.